With the 13th pick in the 1996 NBA draft, the Charlotte Hornets select Kobe Bryant from Lower Marion High School in Pennsylvania. He definitely is in the top 10 players of all time. No question about it. He's the best player in the game? Oh, hands down. He's the best player in basketball, and I don't think it's even close. He has some of the best skills um, that the NBA has ever seen in history. All my life, been grinding all my life. Sacrifice, hustle paid the price. Want a slice, got to roll the dice. That's why, all my life, I've been grinding all my life. Look, all my life, been grinding all my life. Wisdom Wednesday. What's up, guys? It's Coach JB. Today is another bright and early Wisdom Wednesday. As you can hear, the birds are chirping. It's a beautiful morning. Today's lesson is coming from a good friend of mine, Mr. Alan Stein Jr. He's gonna talk about some lessons that he learned from Kobe Bryant. Let's check it out. Back in 2007, Nike flew me out to Los Angeles to work the first ever Kobe Bryant Skills Academy. Nike brought in the top high school and college players from around the country for an intense three-day mini camp with the best player in the world. And for those of you that don't follow basketball, let me paint the picture. In 2007, Kobe was the best player in the game. Michael Jordan, who everybody's heard of, had already retired, actually twice at that point, and LeBron James, as great as he was, he was still climbing that mountain. Kobe was that dude. Now, an important fact about me, as you've probably gathered from the pictures, I've spent most of my life in a basketball bubble. So I had heard the urban legend of how insanely intense Kobe's individual and private workouts were. And I figured, now I'm on camp staff. This is my chance, this is my shot. So at my earliest opportunity, I walked up to him and asked if I could watch one of his private workouts. And he was incredibly gracious, and he smiled and said, sure, I'm going tomorrow at four. And I got a little bit confused because I had just got done looking through the camp schedule, and the camp schedule said that the first workout with the kids was the following day at 3.30. And Kobe noticed the confused look on my face, and he clarified that with a wink and said, yeah, that's 4 a.m. My first two favorite parts are that he was incredibly gracious and that he smiled. Kobe understood that Alan was going out on a limb and could have very well have just been shut down. So he greeted him with a smile and welcomed him into the workout. My second favorite part was that it's at 4 a.m. This was a key philosophy to Kobe. He understood that if he got up early and put in the hours at 4 and then 11 and then 4 and then 7, there was no possible way for his competition to catch up. Well, as you all know, there's not a legitimate excuse in the world on why you can't be somewhere at four in the morning. So I basically committed myself to being there and I figured if I was gonna be there anyway, I might as well try and impress Kobe. I might as well show him how serious of a trainer I was. So I came up with the plan to beat him to the gym. So I set my alarm for 3 a.m. The alarm goes off, I quickly jump up, I get myself together, and I hop in a cab, and I head to the gym. And I, I get out of the cab, and it's 3.30 in the morning, so it's pitch black outside. And yet the moment I step out of the cab, I can see the gym lights already on. Even from the parking lot, I can faintly hear a ball bouncing and sneakers squeaking. I walk in the side door, Kobe's already in a full sweat. He was going through an intense warm-up before his scheduled workout started with his trainer. He was going through an intense warm-up 45 minutes before his scheduled workout. Kobe understood that in order for his body to be prepared for his training session, he had to get warmed up. It's going to take 15 minutes for your body to warm up whether you want to do it or not. So you're going to take away from your training session if you don't warm up. And secondly, and probably the most important point, is that he valued the time of the individuals who were investing in him. He understood that when they showed up, they were ready to work, and they shouldn't have to wait on him to get prepared. Now, out of professional courtesy, I didn't say anything to him, and I didn't say anything to his trainer. I just sat down to watch. And for the first 45 minutes, I was shocked. For the first 45 minutes, I watched the best player in the world do the most basic footwork 
and offensive moves. Kobe was doing stuff that I had routinely taught to middle school age players. Now, this is Kobe Bryant, so don't get it twisted. Every single thing he was doing, he was doing with unparalleled level of intensity. And he was doing everything with surgical precision, but the stuff he was actually doing was incredibly basic. Now the workout lasted a couple hours and when it was over, I didn't say anything to him. I didn't say anything to his trainer. I just quietly left. But my curiosity got the best of me. Later that day, I had to know. So I went back up to Kobe and I said, Kobe, I don't get it. You're the, you're the best player in the world. Why are you doing such basic drills? And again, he was super gracious and smiled, but he said with all seriousness, why do you think I'm the best player in the world? Because I never get bored with the basics. Because I never got bored with the basics. Kobe understood that if he was mediocre at a million things, he would never be great. Because he focused on the basics and he perfected the basics, he excelled above his competition. I never get bored with the basics. Kobe Bryant, the best player on the planet, said I never get bored with the basics. That taught me a, a life-changing lesson. And that's just because something is basic, it doesn't mean that it's easy. If it was easy, everyone else would be doing it. But as you all know, we live in a world that tells us it's okay to skip steps, that tells us it's okay to circumvent the process, that all but begs us to chase what's hot and what's flashy and what's sexy and ignore what's basic. The basics work. They always have and they always will. And if you want to uh, achieve your potential in performance, individually and collectively, you have to admit that the basics work, but you also have to have the humility to acknowledge that implementing them with consistency is never going to be easy. You have to understand that the basics work. They always have and they always will. And you have to buy into working on them. And lastly, you have to have the humility to understand that consistently implementing them is not going to be easy. I hope you took something from this video. And if you know somebody that could benefit from it as well, forward it on to them or tag them in the comments below. If you haven't had the chance yet, make sure you check out Alan's book, Raise Your Game. Until next time, remember, work hard, work smart, work consistent, and keep your mind where your feet are.